Yes. Sasa, uh, can you disable the chime? It's already disabled. Thank you. We start. We start. Sorry, Tita Melly. Everyone, please mute. Good morning. Today, we celebrate the feast of Mary Magdalene. The eminent among the women of Galilee, who stood beside our Blessed Mother at the foot of the cross and was chosen by Christ to be one of the first witnesses of his resurrection. We also celebrate the birthday of Reverend Mother Marie Joseph Butler, religious of the Sacred Heart of Mary, in whose name our organization was founded, an organization whose work in support of church and ministry takes as its inspiration the lives of the women of Galilee. We are joined in this celebration by the members of the Mother Butler Mission Guilds from all over the Philippines and our friends and benefactors. On this joyful day, let us all welcome our priest presider, Father Tito Kaluwa. The Lord said to Mary Magdalene, go to my brothers and tell them, I'm going to my father and your father, to my God and your God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, as we gather today for this really twin celebrations, we gather in gratitude for the Lord's uh, continued fidelity to all of us, especially to your community, for you to continue your mission. Of course, today we gather also asking for the Lord's Spirit to help you, your community, to discern what is the, you know, the, the renewed mission of Mother Butler, given the changing context of church and given the changing context, especially of gathering together for our celebrations of the Eucharist. My dear brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son entrusted Mary Magdalene before all others with announcing the great joy of the resurrection, grant, we pray, that through her intercession and example, we may proclaim the living Christ, and come to see him reigning in your glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading from the book Song of Songs. The bride says, On my bed at night I sought him, whom my heart loves. I sought him, but I did not find him. I will rise then and go about the city, 
in the streets and crossings, I will seek him whom my heart loves. I sought him, but I did not find him. The watchman came upon me as they made their rounds of the city. Have you seen him whom my heart loves? I had hardly left them when I found him whom my heart loves. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, let our response be, my soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. O God, you are my God whom I seek. For you my flesh pines and my soul thirsts like the earth, parched, lifeless, and without water. Response. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. Thus have I gazed toward you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. For your kindness is a greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. Response. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. Alleluia, alleluia. Tell us, Mary, what did you see on the way? I saw the glory of the risen Christ. I saw his empty tomb. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we do not know where they put him. Mary stayed outside the tomb weeping and as she wept, she bent over into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord, and I do not know where they laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there, but did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you laid him and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what he told her. My dear brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, let me, let me just uh, congratulate uh, Mother Butler Mission Guild uh, you know, it's um, you have done really tremendous work, and I've I've seen this uh, uh, all over all over the country. Really, when I, when I was uh, assigned in Mindanao back in the late '80s, and then also in the early '80s when I did mission trial. Um, so you see, you see how how helpful uh, your your mission is, no? especially for the poorer parishes. No, and I think it's something that um, that is very very commendable. And of course. For me, what I, I read up, of course, on Mother Butler, and uh, what I found amazing was clearly she was a woman of, of, of great substance. Um, she, I mean, founding uh, several colleges and schools across continents is, is quite a feat at that time. No? And yet, you know, she, she, one of her legacies, so to speak, is again to, to found your, your community. It's almost like, uh, not, 
not naman diametrically opposed, but it's almost like different domains, no? different domains. And of course, um, I was reading and then I could not help but smile. I said, she must have been a terrific person to, to have negotiated with the Jesuits. You know? So I'm sure she had many, many dealings with the Jesuits. And, and for me, that is, um, that is quite remarkable. But let me just reflect on that, that uh, two domains wherein she worked with as a first point for our reflection. I have two other points for reflection. Uh, you realize when I was reading her, her, her work, it could not, I could not help but be reminded of the Martha and Mary principle. That it is almost like uh, here's a woman very actively involved in, in, uh, in really you know, high level of academic, uh, academic work. And then also a woman who, who goes back to the church you know, and, and really decides to serve such, such, in a sense, contemplative type of work, you know, providing for, for the celebration of the Eucharist, providing for the formation of women and getting women to be active in the ministry of the church. And for me, that is um, really a very visionary, both a visionary and yet a very, you might say, going back to the core essential type of, of ministry. And let, that brings me now to my, to my second point. And I'll go back to this point as we close, no, my first point. When you take a look at the life of uh, Mary Magdalene, whose feast day we celebrate today, you know, she is clearly one of, as, as the title of Mary Magdalene goes, she is the apostle to the apostles. And clearly, historically, it is, it is seen that um, she, she was one of those who constantly supported Christ and the apostles. And even after the, the death and resurrection and ascension of the Lord, she was a very active member of the early Christian church. In fact, according to, to the story, uh, she eventually was... Uh, persecuted. She was put on a boat by the Jews. And for a while, the boat was just uh, sort of sailing uh, with no direction until finally it lands in France. And when supposedly when she gets to France, she lives a contemplative life. She lives in a cave and, uh, and, and, and becomes a contemplative. That's why Mary Magdalene is a very, is a very famous, uh, one of the most revered saints in France. And when you look at that life of Mary, again, it reminds you of the life of of the ministry of uh, Mother Butler. But let me just um, focus on that, that fidelity of Mary, her devotion to, to the Lord and eventually to the early church. Uh, we need to remember that Mary, uh, remember also, Mary is not the prostitute. I think that is something that uh, should be cleared. No? She was not the prostitute that the Lord forgave. But clearly she was the woman from whom the Lord expelled seven demons. But I think that the central grace of Mary Magdalene was her conversion. Her conversion from being possessed by, by seven demons to becoming one of the most faithful followers of Christ. And I think precisely because of that fidelity and devotion to Christ, Mary earned her place at the foot of the cross. In the same way that our Blessed Mother earned her, her place at the foot of the cross, Mary Magdalene traditionally was one of those who earned her place at the foot of the cross. Of course, some, some commentators, some scholars would say that should be taken symbolically because most certainly she was present during the crucifixion. But the symbolism in the church is that she stands at the foot of her cross with the Blessed Mother and with John the Beloved. But I think it is precisely that grace that we pray for now. We pray for a deeper devotion a deeper fidelity to the mission that God is calling us to. And I think most certainly Mary Magdalene is, is a saint who can intercede for us in trying to renew that grace in our lives. And when you take a look at Mary Magdalene, it's, it's almost like, I don't know, it's a complete process from conversion to fidelity to mission to devotion to the Lord and earning that place to be at the foot of the cross, and more importantly, to be the first witness of the resurrection, which now brings me to my third point. You know, there is, uh, there is Ignatius's um, interesting insight. For those of you who have gone through the spiritual exercises, the fourth week of the exercises are the meditations on the resurrection. 
And one of the first meditations in the fourth week of the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola is that he said, although scripture does not mention it, I am certain, Ignatius said, I am certain that the risen Lord first appeared to his blessed mother, to Mary, our blessed mother. And Ignatius says that because of the closeness of the Lord to Mary, and I would add because of Mary's fidelity to her mission, then he said he cannot imagine that the risen Lord would not have appeared to Mary first before anybody else. And I think that is such a beautiful and I would say valid observation. And therefore, for the Lord to appear to Mary Magdalene second, following the tradition of Ignatius, then it must have been a testament to Mary's deep fidelity and devotion to the Lord. I think that is something that is very important for us not to forget and to remember that the role of, of, of the women in the ministry of Christ was, was something very, very central. Of course, the, the, the sad thing is that I think the, the taking over of, of the Western church hijacked that, 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 that role of women. But again, going back, no? going back to understanding the role of women in the, in the ministry and mission of Christ and of the church, I think that is, especially for your community, I think that is something that you need to reflect on and again to discern. As, and now I go back to the first point of my homily, is to discern now what is the renewed sense of mission of the Mother Butler Mission Church? What is the renewed sense of service that you can render now? And I would, I would like you to consider that I think the church will not go back to what we knew it was before this pandemic. For example, this will take years for us to really bring back the, the crowds into the church. And if you try to look around you, more and more people are going to masses because of the online masses, because of television. More and more people are turning to prayer. And I think we need to reflect on these things and to harness the graces that are coming to us in the midst of this crisis, to look at the opportunities of evangelization that we can make. And most certainly, I think, the Mother Butler Guild will play a very important role to remain faithful to your mission, but to also understand the changing context in which this mission is to be lived. And I leave this for your prayer and reflection. I leave this for your discernment. And perhaps as a community, individually, you can discern over this. And, and pray that the Lord will guide you in your discernment. And hopefully as a community, you will come to decisions that will continue to, to live out your mission, the Mother Butler Guild, and to live it out within the context of our church now. And I pray that the Lord will send you his spirit. I pray that Mother Butler will, will always intercede for you as you do your discernment. And today, again, as we celebrate the 160th birth anniversary of Mother Butler, we, we thank her for giving you this tremendous mission for the church. And let us pray that with your renewed mission, you may bring in more and more members of this guild to bring more and more, especially among the younger generations, that you may continue what for me is a very, very important part of, of, the, of the church. And I pray that you may also deepen that sense of being contemplatives in action, to continue to, to nurture the formation efforts, the formation programs that, that Mother Butler herself said should be given to women. But remember, all formation must bear fruit in mission. So it is really contemplation and action, discernment and choices that lead to action. And today we ask also that the Mother Butler Guild, especially in the Philippines, may become a very active builder of God's kingdom in our midst. That part of the challenge now that we face as a church, that we face as a nation, we face as really as, as, as humanity, is to rebuild. And I pray that you may always remind people 
that the rebuilding is not simply a socio-economic task. The, building is, the rebuilding is not only a socio-political task, but the rebuilding is a spiritual and really an existential task. And for us, it is to rebuild towards the kingdom of God. So today, let us celebrate. Let us thank the Lord for your having been called to mission. And let us ask the Lord to renew that mission in a world that will entirely be different. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, Mary Magdalene experienced the joy of encountering <coughs> Jesus on his resurrection, a grace with which the Lord has found it worthy for M Mother Butler to experience the same encounter. May these encounters bring meaning and renewal to our lives as we say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear, Lord, our, hear our prayer. We pray for, for Pope Francis, our bishops, priests, and all religious, our good shepherds who have ministered to our souls and nourished our spirits during this time of pandemic. Lord Jesus, be their light, strength, and consolation. For this we pray. Lord, hear, Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our national and local government leaders. Lord, grant them wisdom and discernment. May the Spirit motivate them with a genuine sense of duty and love for our country, with the courage to stand for truth and justice. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the deliverance from the devastation wrought by COVID-19. Lord, hear the cries of people all over the world. Console our fears and anguish. Open our eyes to see the opportunity to create a new world more humane, and more compassionate. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all doctors, nurses, medical staff, and all who serve on the front lines. Lord, protect them as they place their own well-being at risk for the service of all. Bless their courage and their sacrifice. For this we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for the daily wage earners, for those who have lost their businesses, for all the displaced now living in anxiety. Lord, bring them consolation and peace and lead them to people and organizations that can help them. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Ever grateful for blessings we have received, comfortable homes with food on the table, we pray for the homeless and the hungry and the families who do not have enough food on their tables. May we practice their true Christian compassion and share what we have with the poor. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. On this feast day of Mary Magdalene, we pray for women who grace the lives of their families, for mothers who introduce their children to the kingdom of God, for widows who sanctify their loneliness with prayer, for all women who strive to live in light of your truth. Bless them with more courage, perseverance, and fidelity. For this we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the dearly departed members of the Mother Butler Mission Guilds and the Mother Butler Foundation, whose lives of service enriched our church and community. We remember our members who passed away during this pandemic. Rossi Valencia, our national advisor. Priscilla 
masilungan pambataan. Christina Bautista, La Union. Victoriana Kapilian, Maasin. Lagrimas Galang, Manila. Eleditha Diamos T. Cebu. Emilia Corpus Baguio. Sofia Pan, Kidapawan. Pasita Damiano, La Union. Chit Feria, Manila. Trining Lainez, Virac. May God bless them with every spiritual blessing and grant them eternal rest. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you, Father, for giving us an example of heroic consecration to your altar in Reverend Mother Marie Joseph Butler. Show us that she is worthy of veneration on your altar and fill us with a burning aspiration of her life to serve you alone and all your people for your sake. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember Clara Corpus, who in 1955 planted the seed of the Mother Butler Mission Guilds with six of her friends. Today, we number over 7,000. May all of us who have received the love of God without cost continue to serve God and church with fidelity and love. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, may we welcome the good news of the resurrection in our future life with you. Grant we ask that you may experience the fruit of his resurrection in us, that we remain faithful and faithful and generous towards the mission you have entrusted to us, to the Mother Butler Mission Guild. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, may we welcome. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness. We have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual food. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that this, our sacrifice, may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings presented on the commemoration of St. Mary Magdalene, whose homage of charity was graciously accepted by your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love. And that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As in exaltation, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, 
our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, he gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, the order of bishops, the clergy, the entire people your son has gained for you, especially the community you have gathered here before you in worship, in thanksgiving, and in humble and hopeful supplication. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Remember especially our sisters, Marie Joseph, and all the departed members of the guild. Welcome them, Lord, into, your, into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with Saint Mary Magdalene, the apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray.
Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Lord, we beg you not to look on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace, the unity and the joy of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, peace be with you. Peace. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My dear brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away our sins, the sin of the world. Happy are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. God, our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease 
and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them and grant eternal rest to those who have died. Grant us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We ask for your special providence and protection for the whole world and humanity, our country and our people, our families and our friends. Send your spirit to protect us from this virus. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and ever-blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, help of all Christians and health of the sick, pray for us. Our Lady of Fatima, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Rock, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Most Sacred Heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Santo Nino de Cebu, have mercy on us. Divine Mercy, have mercy on us. And let us pray. May the holy reception of your mysteries, Lord, instill in us that persevering love which, with which St. Mary Magdalene clung resolutely to Christ, her Master, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in joy and peace to love and to serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Father Jesus. Thank you, Father. Salamat. Thank you, Father.
I'd like to thank Chris and yes. I for helping us in the mass. Thank you also to Meli, our national president. Bianca, Lisa, Lisa, Lini, for doing the readings. And thank you to everyone who joined us in this celebration for the first anniversary of Mother Mary, Mother Mary Joseph Butler. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Can we take a photo? <laughs> All the members. Yeah. Bianca, can you be the one to take it, please? Or Sasa? Yeah. 